And we're back with another match for the night, the final match of the night, and today it is another game for the CCA, Div 1, um, UT Dallas against, I forget the second school off the top of my head, I'm, but I'm not alone in this never for me, I have a good old friend of mine who's about to introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Bio, thank you for introducing me, Dark, and yeah, as he said, we are going to be here casting um, casting an, a very interesting match between Volatile Radiance from Hofstra University and Stars of Orion from UT Dallas. Um, it is going to be, of course, as per usual, a best of seven set. There are no playoff implications here, so it's going to be fairly casual for both teams, but it, we are still in for a good one, folks, since this is a Division One matchup and we're going to be starting here on clam blitz museum de alfonsino dark tell me uh, what do you expect we might be seeing here like what play styles might we see the two teams come up with honestly it's hard to say i don't know these teams very well especially considering app this is post patch anything's wild right now so they could be pretty much running anything all under the under the sun right now there's hmm. really we're in for a surprise that's for sure and as it, yeah, it's very hard to say right now. Mm, definitely. I think for uh, for Clemens on Museum de Alfonso, you know, it's really going to depend how well the teams are able to balance um, on their pushes. Because on Clam Blitz, due to the penalty system, it is very important to make big pushes instead of a lot of small ones. Because obviously the penalty system punishes you for simply scoring one or two clams, right? So I think it's all going to boil down to which team can manage their resources more effectively to maintain their pushes going for longer and longer so maintaining forward pressure while also going back to get clams however just as we're saying that we are now starting here um on museum of Alfonsino. we see a tetra wiper comp come out on the side of volatile radiance and a dually squelcher composition come out on the side of stars of orion me as a dually squelchy player i am definitely very happy to see that weapon finally pop up we're seeing both teams play a very passive neutral here trying to find picks one of, um, to one of the left side of the side of volatile radiance missiles go off from the flingza will they be able to find the picks to make uh sparks happen yes they find two one on the 52 and one on the 10 attack splatter shop and we're seeing volatile uh stars of orion sorry actually pushing very very aggressively they're starting to get some good uh some good presence some good presence on on volatile radiance's plat However, as I say that two do go down, three go down to the 52. Oh. Very great um, de defense there. And I believe this will be the end of um, Stars of Orion's push. That's for sure. Right now, the comps, like I said, are very a hodgepodge of what you typically don't see as of lately in terms of meta with the game that occurred in certain, that last patch right now. But it's been blow for blow so far. Stars of Orion managed to get a few picks, but finally. Volatile Radiance gets a few more, and it's back to back right now. Volatile Radiance is down three, two, three. But Stars of Ryan is another one down. They need to make this push happen with this pat. It's very important to control this pat right now. And if they can't get that control, they can't get that that push going for the open. But just as this is going down, what they they keep falling, they keep falling trade by trade. Now it is also worth mentioning. Uh, Stars, Stars of Orion's composition is definitely interesting. It's not something that you see a lot because they are running a double backline composition alongside two quick respawn weapons. So they're two very polarizing play styles. Normally you see something like a backline, the QR, the quick respawn weapons, and then a company with some more traditional uh, support slash slayer hybrids such as shooters. However, with, with those two very different play styles, um, it is going to lead to some friction between how, not only how they push, but how they defend. Uh, however, regardless, we are seeing Stars of Orion managing to make some stuff work there, even with the difficulties of their composition. Uh, two go down on the side of Stars of Orion, and Volatile Radiance are looking to make a, another push onto their plat. The Octobrush taking some strong presence, not trading with the Tetra. I'm not sure if that was worth it. I think it was better for them to play for that Zipcaster and move the Charger out of the way. Uh, right now, Volta uh, uh, Radiance has this first opening right now with the clamp. The Wiper is trying to stop and put him off. It gets three down immediately. No time to actually extend that lead from their side. As Stars Orion is going, it strikes back with just a punch that just stops him right in the tracks. And right now, they have the advantage. They're, they need to paint up. They need to get these clamps going. But, oh, but that 52 comes out of nowhere and stops that push. And now, just like that, their, their attempt to take back is just halted. 
Yeah, Stin 52 is doing a great job of maintaining frontline pressure, getting key punishes, key picks, all the while farming that very useful special kill level 5.1. It's going to give it's going it's going to let their team get in as it is a very useful displacement special. And however, just as I say that, ah, they push a little bit too far, overextend a bit, and they do end up getting picked. The Tetra on the side of the side of Orion goes in very deep. Now, doesn't quite manage to get a pick, but they are stalling in one position. Let's see how much time they can take resources from Volatile Radiance. Ooh. Oh, and a great pick on the 52. 52 yet again overextends, gets another pick on the Dueling Squadron. It's only the Octobrush in mid. But they are, ah, this is the problem. This is the problem that I was talking about with the comp on the side of Stars of Orion. They, in that moment, they only had one backline up and that made it really difficult to capitalize on the space that the Tetra made with those two picks. And we're seeing Stars of Orion struggle to maintain map control as Volatile Radiance start inching their way forward. Ah, uh, it's trade for trade right now. As soon as one gets picked, with two, two more gets picked for the other team. But right now, the, the, the advantage in this is Stars of Orion's favor. They're pushing up. This, this could be the first chance to get some points on the board. There's only one minute left. They need to make this advantage to work in the best of their favor right now. As Violet Volatile Radiance, two more go down. But this, this could be the push to, to try again. And that's a wipeout! This is their lead right now. There's only 45 seconds remaining. Volatile Radiance needs to come back and try and hold their point. But can, can they hold with only 40 seconds remaining? Yeah, like I said, it is going to be very, very important for these teams to make those big pushes. In this case, neither team has been able to make a very, very, a very good one. However, however, regardless, with seeing how these two teams are playing very passively, I think that lead of 71 might just be enough for Stars of Orion to uh, to win this game if they could hold a solid defense like they have been doing for the um, uh, for the for the rest of this game. Now we see one go down on the side of Stars of Orion. There's the flings that they are not going to have those missiles to stall out volatile radiance's push special start getting popped on the side of volatile radiance this squadron pushes up and that is the oh. lead very quick comeback on the side of volatile radiance putting them on the board one zero against stars of orion Oh, what an exciting game that was. A lot of back and forth trades for from each team. As soon as one player goes down, two more gets picked off. And it, it was very back and forth, blow for blow. But they just managed to to just squeeze out that victory at the end after that, that, that scary push in the last minute. Oh, definitely. And I will admit, I was expecting Stars of Orion to be able to defend a little bit more. I wasn't liking how Volatile Radiance were popping specials uh, very, very haphazardly. However, then again, all they needed was just a power clam and a few clams to get um, to take that lead. And that's what we saw. Now here we, we are going to be going to our next match, Splat Zones on Mako Mart. Now, I would like to mention, I do definitely think we're, we're going to be seeing the Flingza, the Wiper, and the Tetra stay on the side of Stars of Orion. They are definitely very potent weapons on this map. But I'm not too sure if they'll switch off, um, if they'll uh, mix up their composition uh, on the side of Volatile Radiance. What do you think, Dark? Honestly, it's hard to say. The, 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 the last weapons, they, they worked fine. But for a map like this, it might struggle in certain areas. So th th there's definitely an opportunity to ch ch uh, change a few things up, you know? Maybe bring out the tri slosher That's been seeing a lot more play lately. And in a map like this, it can provide very much a very big value for the team. Oh, definitely. Now, here are we starting. We just need two more players to ready up. However, Splatoon's Mako Mart, it is definitely going to have a very strong ebb and flow. We're going to be seeing those team fights pulse the game uh the gameplay in and out in and out revolving around that middle zone and those two stacks on the sides of that zone is going to all boil down to which team can maintain control of those two key areas those two stacks um more consistently and for more time because those serve as great positions they give you high ground they give you cover they give you a place to spam bombs they give you a place to farm specials and that is going to be very important for locking out the other team and getting some points on the board however so we go in here stars of orion coming out with not they took away one of the backlines that they come out with the tri slash of Nouveau. that is three quick respawn weapons very aggressive composition coming out from stars of orion while very little change on the side of volatile radiance aside from that luna blaster and that tri slasher definitely a lot of big hitboxes here let's see if they're going to be able to do, do of it and just as i say that not quite that is 
three down on the side of Volatile Radiance. That's going to be Stars of Orion taking the zone first. And starting to establish a bit of a lockout as they look to clean up this team fight. Yes, for sure. Stars of Orion definitely has more like very much rushdown style in your face that comp, which if, if Volatile Radiance can't respond, this is going to be a very quick game. Right now, they managed to flip the zone and are starting to apply this pressure, but can Stars of Orion retake this? It's very, very much hard to say right now. Oh, for sure. We're seeing a fight come out on the right side, and Volatile Radiance will be winning that. Wiper goes down. However, Luna Blaster goes down on the side of Volatile Radiance. Inkjet comes out. Will it find some picks? Yeah. Yes, it does. On the Tetra Dually. Very impressive pick. That may be what they, what Volatile Radiance needed to hold the zone. This Tri-Slasher is holding on to the right stack for dear life as Stars of Orion start running in with that Tactic Cooler, trying to get some picks. And yes, indeed, that is three down on the side of Volatile Radiance. A wipeout, in fact. Just Dewey's Culture is finally falling to the raw aggression of Stars of Orion. And they begin to... Uh, to establish their lockout, they take zone, they start farming up more specials, and to see if they are able to hold Volatile Radiance at bay. Oh, and just like that, three are currently down for Volatile Radiance. Stars of Orion definitely has the advantage right now. They need to make sure they keep this pressure up in order for a, a complete lockout right now. They need to paint up, they need to keep just in their spawn pretty much, and they are fighting in their spawn right now. Volatile Radiance struggling to, to enter back to the zone. As two more go down, oh, this is not looking good for Volatile Radiance. Only three, they have three minutes remaining, but their lead is just about to be over. Definitely. If you're Volatile Radiance here, the last thing you want to do is panic, and that is what we're seeing. Two down on the side of Volatile Radiance. The clock is ticking faster and faster. 15 points left on the board for Stars of Orion. This is going into knockout territory. This Squelcher desperately trying to move into zone, trying to at least tap light. And... Oh. In Look of time, Stars of um, Volatile Radiance manage to flip it, buy themselves a little bit more time, and setting up yet another lockout. This is the ebb and flow that I was telling you that is so important in Splat Zone's games. It is very important to read that uh, to read that gameplay and know when to push, when to defend, where to push, etc. Because it is very important to follow that game state. Oh, and just like that Volatile Radius, they managed to hold that lead, but not for long as Stars of Orion managed to get, not only get two books, but just quickly flip that zone back in their favor. Right now, they're once again pushing up into their spawn, trying to keep sure, keep this pressure up, keep this momentum going in their favor, and so in order to like not maybe not knock it out at this point, but sort of time them out. But they, if they can't do that, if they, the zone's not in their favor, and it's, it's very close right now as to which way to go, but Volatile Radius manages to flip back in their name. Oh, for sure. We're seeing a lot of scrappy fights come out on mid here. This Tetra trying to get a pick on the left side does not quite manage to do it, but they might not even need to since Stars of Orion have so much map control, have so much space, and they're coming up on a few specials. Volatile Radiance is struggling to find a way in there. they are going to have to work with this um they're gonna have to work with this wave breaker from the dually squelchers that may not be enough as the penalty is ticking lower and lower they, they are now yet again in lockout in, uh, in, in knockout territory that is only nine points in reality left on the board but again volatile radiance is consistently putting us on the edge of our seats and getting that cap zone at the last second and with just one minute remaining folks we're going to be seeing if volatile radiance managed to hold this long enough to take uh, to get to themselves on the board against stars of orion okay yes they're definitely gonna, going to have to be their last stand with only 40 seconds remaining and leads starting to stick in their favor but what manages to fall off the, unfortunately falls off the map but and stars of Radiance takes that lead three are down volatile radiance there's 30 seconds remaining it, it is and all hope seems to be lost for Volatile Radiance. They'll, they'll have, they need to make their plays now. They need to go in now and try and retake claim. They don't have... It's all ticking down right now. Definitely. With only just about 15 seconds left on the clock. Time is definitely running out for Volatile Radiance. They're going to have to go now. They're going desperately with these try strikes. Ah, Stars of Orion desperately trying to paint. Even the Tetra is painting. And just like that, <sighs> it is not quite enough. And Stars of Orion take this second game 2-0 against Volatile Radiance. Oh, what a game. That was definitely closer than... <laughs> yeah. Definitely, that was... Very, very exciting, especially those last second zone captures. 
and flips from Volatile Radiance. However, as much as they wanted, that was not quite enough to get them the win. For sure. Uh, honestly, there, 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 there's so much going on in that game. I hardly had time to process a lot of like what was going on and and whatnot. I, what, what, what could have Volatile Radiance done a little bit better to try and secure that lead just for a little bit longer? Because they definitely, they definitely had that potential to try to secure that win. It, it, it most likely just fell down to just one or two minor mistakes. No, really, the main thing I saw is that they were playing way, way, way too fast. They had to slow down their gameplay, play patiently, slow down, calm down, farm specials. Because in these, in those important lockouts where you, where Stars of Orion had, oh, wait, I'm sorry about that, folks. Uh, it is actually one one score on, uh, it's actually one one score on the board right now. We apologize for that. Uh, we got our colors mixed up a little bit. However, uh, however, we are still going to be seeing them go to Tower Control, Eotel Alley. Now, as I was saying, we were seeing Stars of Orion uh, struggle a little bit to get their um, uh, to get their specials to move back in, and that was making them kind of fumble a little bit and not really be able to push back into zone correctly. However, here on Tower Control, Eotel Alley, with Tower Control being as snowbally as it is, they are definitely going to wipe. They're definitely going to have to correct those mistakes and correct them fast. Since Tower Control leaves very little room for error if you can't adapt to the speed that the other team is playing at. Especially for 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 Eagle to Alley, once you get to a, to a certain endpoint on this on the tower on the tower route, it becomes very much very hard to get the team out of their out of your spot and out of that that sort of area the where the the last checkpoint is. It, if if they if they man they can just lock up that that zone and and get them out and just keep them pushed far by, back enough it shouldn't be any issues but as we head into game number three we'll see if there's any team comp uh team composition changes for either team and definitely we're coming out here stars of orion coming out with their tried and true double backline double quick respawn composition and volatile radiance going back to their to a very similar variation of their game one composition only stopping out the 52 gal for the sloshing machine we're seeing both teams roll out into mid very quickly trying to take some space on the map unfortunately a slight visual visual glitch we cannot up oh. Oh, Unfortunately, that was not a visual glitch. That was a network glitch, and we now have our first disconnect of the set. I this is definitely replay territory. So we're seeing both teams play a little bit slower, um, give up, and we're seeing the battle being ended. Yeah. We apologize for the inconvenience, folks. We'll be right back. Yeah, for sure. It definitely seems uh, it's, it's, it's unclear as to whether it was Nintendo's uh, server's issue or if it was the old player's old issue, but. Nonetheless, it seems like we're going to try that again. Definitely. And, and, and as we wait for this last member and we start up the game again, we're going to take a small break. We will be right back, folks.
All right, welcome back. We now have gotten past our little substitution slash disconnect error, and we are now going to our game three on tower control, Eeltail Alley. Now, now, just like we saw last time, this is a replay, so there will be no composition changes on either side. Sounds of Orion going with their tried and true double quick respawn, double backline comp, and Volatile Radiance going with their Machine Octobrush, Ten Attack Spottershot, and Dooley Squelchers. Both teams roll on to mid very quickly, looking to farm specials and make something happen here. Both uh, two players on the side of Volatile Radiance playing on the bridge very passively. Not really looking for, for much, just looking to punish overextensions from Stars of Orion, which they have done. Three down on the side of Orion. Oh. Right, How just they say that? That is also three down on the side of Volatile Radiance. It is only the Dooley Squelchers with that wave breaker and it's not going to be nearly enough to stand up to this hydra putting so much pressure in the front and as we see this bria bomb getting ready to be thrown out right now the stars are ready to get ready but two go down oh it just seems like there's another unfortunate disconnect on the other team mm, this is unfortunate volatile ratings is second disconnect i believe this is no longer replay territory since it is the second disconnect so uh, we are going to be seeing Stars of Orion simply play this game out and most likely win. But hey, who knows? Volatile Radiance may pull out a, some very interesting sparks and try to get the win here. Uh, most definitely right now. Well, considering that Volatile Radiance has a more rushed out style comp, it, it can work in their favor right now with the, the Booyah Bomb and the Zencaster and the Tri Strikes. But well, we really, they need to play me playing perfectly in order to try and. Try to hope to get this win off of Stars of Orion, which is unfortunate of it. Definitely, this Petra going very deep. However, wow, Volatile Rinse is doing a great job. They seem like a different team now with this disconnect of consistently getting <laughs> several picks on Stars of Orion, making it very difficult for them to start pushing up. However, regardless, we are seeing two quick respawn weapons on Stars of Orion push up very aggressively. This, These two backlines on the tower getting ready to support their two Slayers. Pushing up, putting with those missiles, with uh, with those shots from the Hydra, putting out so much suppressive fire for the Tetra and the Wiper. We're seeing them put out so, so, so much frontline pressure. Those two weapons are so good at ho just holding forward, like you said, Dark, with that rushdown style. Uh, and, and in fact, the Wiper is already behind them, going for a very aggressive spawn oh. camp, trades with the Octo Rush, and that just might be enough. Points are taking down for Stars of Orion, and that is a knockout unfortunate disconnect yet again from volatile radiance but since it was the second one now that will not be a replay and it is now 2-1 in favor of stars of orion yeah it was very unfortunate in in their favor and we'll see if maybe there's a substitution in their play i don't know exactly if they have the roster to do that or not but We'll, we'll find out in just a moment, but that was a very... Up, up until not counting this game, the, these past few sets have been very back and forth, so I, I still feel like Vol Volatile Radiance, they aren't out of this just quite yet. You know, that might have been unfortunate for their favor, and that might cost them, but I think they still have it. Uh, they have what it takes in them to sort of stay in this game just for a bit longer. Mm, possibly, and it, it was very impressive to see Volatile Radiance hold up for as long as they did. They were getting... They were playing very, very well, very patiently, um, um, and punishing that double quick respawn composition um, from Stars of Orion very, very well. So we may see them carry some of that, uh, some of that gameplay into the next round and see if they can take advantage of that to finally to, to get another point against Stars of Orion. Now we're coming up on Game Three, Rainmaker on Minsby Metalworks Dark. What can you tell us about this map and how these teams should approach it? Well, I originally I might have said that. Because of the current meta, the it, might, it would be a very hard and slow, and just a slog to just see any points coming through on this, on uh, not on just this map, but on this game mode with Rainmaker. But with Crab seeming just dropping out of the meta right now, not entirely, but still just like not seeing as much many play as it used to. It's honestly, I honestly couldn't tell you how this is gonna play out. You know, it's it, it could it could go anywhere. Definitely, but I, well, what I will think we will see is the teams mostly going for that right hand checkpoint since it is a bit safer than going for that far left one. It is um, it is not only closer, but it also sets you up for 
a for a more consistent push moving up that ramp on the right side however that left that left hand checkpoint can must also not be ignored since it gives you that very valuable jump onto the other team's grading that gives you around 20 to 30 points and secures a very very nice lead if you manage to pull it off now of course it is a much longer route uh going through that grading area in mid but uh but we may see teams mix it up there if they manage to get a full wipe or something along those lines now due to um some issues here with the substitution and the and some network issues on with the internet of our players we are going to take a small break yet again sorry folks uh to get this issue resolved we will be right back All right, after getting what I believe is sort of everything else sorted out, it looks like we're about to head into finally our third match of the game, which is Mincemeat on Rainmaker. Definitely, and as I was saying, we're going to be seeing that dilemma come up between those two, uh, those two checkpoints, each offering their uh, their own respective strengths and weaknesses to those two. As we are now waiting on our streamer to ready up here as all as the two teams are ready to go on this game um, for I believe uh, Min Rainmaker Mince Meat Metalworks. See, personally, I believe that you should be willing to risk it sometimes. So I I would wouldn't mind taking that that left route like from time to time, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it here today, considering uh, one team has been definitely playing a lot more rush down heavy, which could work in their favor. Mm, definitely and well 
What a surprise, no composition changes. Exactly the same as we saw last time. Now, like I said, let's see if Volatile Radiants are able to learn from their last match on how to punish this very aggressive composition coming out from Stars of Orion with those two quick respawn weapons. And we're seeing actually the Wiper going very aggressive on the left side, not quite able to get a pick, but I applaud the effort. That was very, very deep. Uh, this Hydra trying to trying to find an angle on here. However, on the low ground is very difficult. Um, you normally, want to be standing on one of the stacks or or your snipe position to get good vantage points. But on the ground, it's very difficult due to the high amount of walls on the stage and just so much cover outside of mid. Now, as I say that, is two down the side of uh, Volatile Raiden. Stars of Orion are looking for an early checkpoint on the right side. This is what I was telling you, Dark. That right, that right checkpoint is so easy to get. It is so close, and with just a few picks, you are, you can get it very, very easily. Of course, Stars of Orion will be ending their push there, but the damage has been done, and they and they secure that first checkpoint, which is so crucial on Rainmaker. See so, yeah, how past games have gone before the patch is once you get that first checkpoint that's it that's as far as you're getting it was just a matter of keeping stalling out the enemy the enemy from getting to that first checkpoint and just as i say that the rainmaker goes down as uh, stars of orion just get a few picks off and volatile radiance and they're trying to sneak it by whoa and heck, how far they get far 48 points that is a very honestly worth it still uh, I'm not sure if that was worth it. They did they, they did lose one of their members, and that's three down on the side of Stars of Orion, and that's not the, that's not necessarily that big a lead. Volatile Radiance can easily just take the right checkpoint and get a, get a few more picks and and get a lead to 40 and onwards. So I'm not really sure if that was worth it. However, this Tetra going in very deep. Screw the Wave Breaker. I don't care if that hard counter is my weapon. Goodbye to you, Dually Sculptures. Very, very nice pick on those squadrons there on the side of the Tetra. Stars of Orion are content simply holding mid. They don't have to push here. They're, they're, they can push with the missiles, sure, but they don't have to do any, anything overly aggressive. All they have to do is just hold mid since they have the lead advantage. Oh. And ah, just as I was saying, they didn't have to do that. Playing way too aggressive when they really shouldn't be. That's the downside of Stars of Orion's comp. Uh, it is very easy for them to overextend, and once they do, they only have the two backlines, which can struggle to maintain themselves. And that was a wipeout on Stars of Orion, but it is just a back and forth here. Both teams going multiple players down. The T Tech trying to get it, not quite the oh. release letter from the Tetra Dulies. Going to come in clutch here, managing to get the pick on the Tanatex Flower Shot, keeping Volatile Radiance at bay for now. And the vaults are ready. They're, they're trying to. They're, they're struggling to get this this checkpoint. They need, they need to at least break this checkpoint in order to get more points off of Sergeant Ryan's 48 points. But what's just that? Two go down to the to the wiper. But the Rainmaker gets reset. All that was for naught. As, as Sergeant Ryan managed to push it back and set resets things back to neutral. That was really unfortunate. You saw the despair in that Octobrush's eyes when they realized you can't grab the Rainmaker during Zipcaster. Oh shucks. But regardless, that was a very impressive performance from this Octobrush, getting two kills from that Zipcaster and opening up a way for their team to push forward. Now, regardless, they are not quite able to get that checkpoint and that advantage from Stars of Orion is still there. Tetra going in very deep, getting a pick, uh, getting a trade with the Tentex Splattershot. Two down on the side of Stars of Orion. Nope, never mind. It is now a 2v2 even on both sides. Volatile Radiant trying to find a way in with this Bruya Bomb. Ah, uh, they used it very, very passively. I think if they wanted to try and push, uh, it would have been better to focus one of the backliners on the side of Stars of Orion. I was just going to say that a stray Rainmaker shot picks the Flinter Roller. Another one picks oh. the Tetra Dooleys. Oh, this Wiper trying to hold on with that hammer. That is three down. It's only the it's only the Flinter Roller inside of Stars of Orion coming back from spawn. And that will be an easy checkpoint for Volatile Radiance. They're going to be popping it and running the Rainmaker as far as they can go to get that lead. Will they be able to not finish oh. that wiper again? It coming in clutch, still alive. No, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. It's still this Flingza not quite able to get the pick. And the points are going down all the way to 26 from Volatile Radiance. Great push, and it may not even stop there, as it is only the wiper alive on the side of the stars of Orion. And Volatile Radiance have no intentions of giving up this momentum. 
There's only 10 seconds left of the club. Stars are right. They need to pick it that right. Okay, they need to start going. Luckily for them, the the the, the checkpoint's down, but they only have just less than a minute now for that Rainmaker timer to get all the way back up to 26 points. But just like that, oh, that was... Ooh. Oh, that unfortunate flank from the machine manages to pick the Rainmaker before they can set up a push in overtime. And Volatile Radiance putting themselves back on the board against Stars of Orion 2 Two on Rainmaker Mince Me. Oh, that, that, that was a that was a very good push by uh, Volatile Radiance up to the the tech way. They managed to not only avoid getting crushed by that that flings of once, but twice, and managing to go all the way up to twenty six on that just single push from checkpoint. That's, oh, that definitely. was insane. And I really liked how Volatile Radiance, although they weren't playing as passively as I would have liked, they did manage to get the picks they needed in the end, punishing Stars of Orion's over-aggression and over-extension a lot of times, and managing to get that checkpoint and moving it on regardless of the stragglers from Stars of Orion trying to frantically get the pick onto their Rainmaker carrier. Now, as, now as the set has each two... Number five, I believe I am not quite sure of the map list. If the streamer could help me out a little bit here, um, the on um, game number five on um, the various we're not the quite moment. able to find the the map mode for for this one. But regardless, we are seeing Volatile Radiance pick up some momentum here, being able to take another game off of Stars of Orion, and we're going to see if they can keep this up throughout the set. If they can keep playing the way they're playing, I could definitely see them just winning two more games against Stars of Orion and taking this set, because it is the best of seven people. Just It's the first team to four wins, and Volatile Radiance, like I said, with this momentum that they're picking up, I think they're in a very good position to win over Stars of Orion in these next few games. It is it is very it's very much been blow for blow for pretty much almost every single one of these games except for that last one where the where the the unfortunate disconnect happened and I honestly believe this will go all the way down to the the final match of the of the, of the set all the way down to, to game number 7. But right now it looks like we're heading off to Clan Blitz off of Ink Art Ink Block Art Academy and your thoughts on that, Bio? Well, Clamblitz on Inkblood Art Academy is uh, definitely very interesting. I do like how I do like the dynamic with the two uh, with the two divisions of the map. Um, due to that pillow in mid, it is divided into right side and left side, which e with each having different um, approach options to the enemy's platform where the clam blast where the clam basket is located. So, so it really depends um, how the team is going to be able to split up and pincer the enemy team on their plat where there's not much room to move and managed to score some clams in and we are seeing no composition changes on the side of um stars oh no i'm sorry we do see a composition change on the stars of orion we are switching out that tetra dually for a 10 attack splatter shot while volatile radiance going for their more traditional game one composition with that 52 gal weber play pushing very very aggressively on the side of stars of orion gets picked on the left side without trading not quite ideal 52 pushing up very far overextends gets picked by the Hydra, I'm not sure if that was worth it. Both teams playing a very neutral game here with picks coming out uh, on both sides. And we're seeing which team is trying to get an advantage, trying to get a foothold in mid to set up a good push and start getting some clams in the other team's basket. And once again, it's almost been trade for trade, just a, a very trending uh, t uh, event throughout these the past few games. But right now, Vol Stars of Ryan are two down, Volta and Radiance have has advantage right now, and they, they, they can possibly potentially. Oh, it's been oh, it's been so back and forth right now. Special come, come up, and an unfortunate disconnect. This is unfortunately the third disconnect. This that uh, from on the side of Volatile Radiance, it seems that one of their um, that one of their players is having some technical difficulty. So once again, we're sorry, folks. Oh, for some reason, this the the teams are still determined to play this out since it is still the beginning of the game i'm not sure why they're not going to replay um uh, I'm, I'm sorry i may just have the disconnect rules incorrect however regardless they are playing this out very interesting movement Ooh. for um, the octobrush to get that trade with the 10 tech splatter shot stars of orion looking to shrug off that death and move forward with these missiles from the flings roller 
Ah, uh, the stars are rising. He's picking up very, picking up the momentum very fast here right now. As this power clamps a bat basket opens up, they managed to start to get these clamps in there. As a Volta Iranians just kind of trickling at this point, while doing the best they can, there really isn't much more they can do right now with just the constant man disadvantage. Mm, however, I do like this very aggressive flings up from Stars of Orion. Very, very funny one shots from the support weapon. This wiper trying to make something work. And despite their man disadvantage, Volatile Ratings are going to do a great job defending and stopping Stars of Orion's push at simply 47. Very nice job from them uh, defending in a 3v4. I fully expected uh, Stars of Orion to simply take uh, take this push and go with it far. Yeah, so that definitely could have been very much, that could have been the knockout for them. But right now, they're, they're trying to get regain momentum. They're trying to try to at least put back, put up a fight back against Volta Radiance. But two, Volta, um, excuse me, Stars of Orion, but Volta Radiance goes down two. And just like that, the clan basket opens up once again as they're pushing in on this push. But they managed to get two picks down, three picks down. This is their chance to, to regain that, the, that lost momentum. Definitely great defense yet again from Volatile Ratings. I am appalled of how well they are being able to punish Stars of Orion's aggression as we saw them do last game. And even with their man disadvantage, I think they might have a very good chance of at least getting a solid push here. There's they pop whale trying to find a way in with that 52. This Octobrush struggling a little bit to move uh, to move against that that uh, Hydra suppressive fire. Not just playing around this stack very, very patiently. Not quite able to do much there. Going back, retreating, and maybe pushing with the Zipcaster. Not quite. However, two do go down to the side of Stars of Orion. Volatile Radiance looking to make something happen here. Even without their Tentacle Expider Shot simply jumping in. <laughs> Stars of Orion have their Wiper going very, very deep with that Ultra Stamp. However, uh, not much is going to come out of it, and both teams are playing a very neutral game here. A lot of trades coming out, but uh, in the end, it's only going to benefit the defenders, Stars of Orion. Yes, right now, there's only one minute left, and, and Stars of Orion has a lot of clams in, in their hands, but with this a sneaky shark by Volta Radiance, they managed to at least put a haul in this potential push right now. But will it be enough to at least gain them enough advantage? But these specials keep coming out. Two go down Volta Radiance. Stars of Orion, this is their chance to push it and push it in the game once that 30 second timer ends. Mm, definitely. I do like how this 52 is doing a great job of holding. However, it's not quite enough and Stars of Orion are going to score on yet another clam with only 20 seconds on the board. I mean, it's running out of time for Volatile Radiance to move with this and go. They need to get into mid now. Paint, paint, paint. Farm specials. Get someone to grab that pity clam. Zipcaster coming out. This thing has to come up huge. Getting several picks, but it will oh. not happen. It is only the 10 attack spider shot left on the side of Volatile Radiance. They get picked. And just as overtime is coming up, I believe that marks doom for Volatile Radiance. The overtime ticking down. They do not have time, nor do they have the advantage, nor the map control, nor the specials, and that was over before it even began, honestly. And Volatile Radiance lose the Stars of Orion 2-3 uh, on the board right now in favor of Stars of Orion. Once again, a very unfortunate happening of, of that disconnect. <laughs> Even with that, though, I will say Volatile Radiance managed to hold the ground very well. No, definitely. And it's genuinely really unfortunate. Volatile Radiance is struggling to, well, uh, not only, well, they're doing a great job in terms of gameplay. They are really punishing that double, those double quick respawn dives from Stars of Orion. They're doing a great job of that, managing to maintain their members' life while also uh, while also picking the other team and getting some paint on the ground, building up their map control. But what they are really struggling is their bandwidth, is their network. They are struggling to keep one of their players in the game at all. And that honestly may be their biggest downfall here as they have already lost two matches to being forced into a permanent man disadvantage due to Nintendo Switch Online simply failing as an online service at times. However, regardless, we're going to shrug that off and go on into Game 7. Um, no, sorry, Game 6 here. Uh, Splat Zones on Mahi Mahi Resort. What can you tell us about this map, Dark? What do you think we're going to see here? 
for my my resorts, I will say, I think with the current comps, I think this will actually a very much likely stay with the current comps. I don't see anything in particular that will try to, oh, what's it called, deter them from their current weapons right now. I mean, the Hydra has a good uh, overhead, and it's very much solid uh, weapon lineup for both sides. Definitely possible. I do think that this will be a very strong map for Stars of Orion's uh, double backline, double quick respawn comp, since Hydra and Flingza thrive here uh, due to this map being very, very backline centric. That Hydra botlane can simply sit on their snipe or sit on one of those top pillars in mid and rain down fire on Volatile Radiance with very little they can do about it without a, without a lot of specials at their disposal while, while giving a lot of map control and space for the two quick respawn weapons to simply get uh, find their way in and get the picks they need to uh, to hold back volatile radiance from getting to the zone and this is something that we saw on splat zones mako march we're going to see if we were going to be seeing a different outcome here on splat zones mahi mahi resort however just as i say that very interesting composition change from stars of orion opting to go with a more conventional Belinza custom junior composition. Very interesting. They opted to leave the Hydra, which I said was so advantageous on this map. And uh, let's see if they can if they can uh, manage to make something work with only this Belinza. Oh, I can already tell this one's gonna be a very much back and forth game right now. As as stars are right, they have an early lead with three down already, and they have to really go and push up this match in their favor right now. Uh, missiles go out and this, the, the, the fire laners are trying to run in another pick down but the wiper finally goes down two go down stars are right but two are down for violent vaults on radiance it's trade for trade but advantage is still in stars are right's favor as they're currently sitting at 65 points and ticking mm, definitely this is what i was telling uh this is what i was telling you dark at the very very beginning of this set the main reason that i did not quite like stars of orion's composition was because two backlines can't quite support the quick respawn weapons enough however we are seeing that change with the inclusion of this custom junior you're seeing how this custom junior is able to push up with the two quick respawn weapons finish off their kills give them some paint behind them to back up etc etc and it's simply giving them a lot more freedom to move and get the picks that they need uh i may have detected a little bit of lag there from volatile radiance however it seems that not much is going to happen um due to that uh, trash tucks come out from volatile radiance they managed to flip the zone putting penalty on stars of orion and buying themselves a little bit of time to hopefully make a comeback however just as they say that two go down on the side of volatile radiance it is not going to be enough this wiper can they find the pick not quite the dubious clutches managed to trade it out two down on both sides Ooh, that auction burst gets the oh. third pick and it is only the flings are roller alive on the side of stars of orion and volatile radiance are looking to set up here and ideally take lead back from Stars of Orion. And just like that, the Octobush goes down to the Flings, and another one potentially goes down, but no! The Hammer comes out, it gets another pick, and they fall into the water! What an unfortunate misplay right there, but will it affect, this uh, affect the advantage right now? Right now, Volatile Radiance has the advantage, and Stars of Orion has a penalty to go through, but they manage to flip it, and begin to chip away at the penalty. Definitely, we're seeing a pretty neutral game, but honestly, this will only benefit Stars of Orion, as they can just afford to hold mid oh. but that is a wipeout and volatile radiance are on fire right now managing to take back the zone they are putting a lot of paint on the ground establishing a very strong uh, sense of map control spamming those bombs spamming those specials and simply denying stars of orion openings to move in and get those quick respawn and give those quick respawn weapons the space they need to get picks just so crucial for this comp but just as i say that man before you even know it, I get a whiplash, and that is three down. That is basically a full wipe on the side of Volatile Radiance, and and, oh. and even before I could finish my thoughts, Stars of Orion have yet again returned to zone, establishing their presence and taking down the counter to extend their lead even further. Yeah, Stars of Orion definitely have the lead right now. 30, 30, 30 points remaining, and there's two minutes, and there's two picks right there. This could be the, this could be the last push. Three picks. Oh, this could be it for Volatile Radiance. If they can't regroup at this very last moment, this this could be game. Oh, this Tetra definitely coming out in clutch with those three picks. Oh. That is Volatile Radiance and all hope is gone. A wipeout on Volatile Radiance and Stars of Orion take the set four to three. What a game ender.
What a game indeed. Uh, th those are those are very th that that church is at the end very or that duel is at the end very much put in the work to keep that keep keep the momentum going in their favor. Mm, definitely. Now I do believe since uh, I do believe since for those of you that are new here here at the CCA, uh, some of our teams like to uh, turn this best of seven into a playoff seven to give some of you viewers some more gameplay to look at now stars of orion may have won the set but if these two teams do decide to go the play all seven route we may see volatile radiance push up the score four to three and you know establish a little bit of bragging rights for themselves coming toe to toe with stars of orion uh, we'll see in just a moment if there's any word on that but i will say i think volatile radiance if if it weren't for those disconnection issues, that that would have been that would have been a very much different story here right now. Mm, definitely, those disconnection issues really screwed over that team. However, props to them for overcoming that and still getting two wins on the board. That is very impressive. I do believe they were a very formidable opponent for Stars of Orion. However, based on the lobby status, I believe that that will be it, folks. There will be no play all seven here and uh well this was a very fun uh trinity cast of uh, definitely some very uh edge of my seat games and um well it was an honor casting with you dark so tell me where can we find you ah uh, you can find me at spf underscore dark at twitch and twitter and where can they find you bio well, you can find me on Twitter at bio underscore underscore 29. And like I said, it was a pleasure casting this with you, Dark. Um, and we hope that you viewers enjoyed this great set um, between these two very strong university teams, Stars of Orion and Volatile Radiance. And we will see you next time.